Hey, this is OXDF, and today we are looking, we're going to be writing a script, a quick Python script to help us as we try to do some exploitation. Um, specifically, we're in the Snoopy box from Hack the Box, and the scenario is this. We have a directory traversal slash file read vulnerability. Um, it's not an LFI, doesn't execute code, but it is a file read. Um, and the twist is when it returns the file to me, it returns it to me in a zip file. So I could just, you know, put into my URL bar on Firefox, download the file, go into my downloads, open it up, unzip it, take out the file, look at it, repeat. But as I'm enumerating the box and when I want to read a lot of files, that's going to get really annoying. So um, in just a few minutes, I can write a Python script that'll do this for me. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's go check it out. Um, I'm on the website here and the vulnerability itself is in uh, download, uh, I believe it's file equals, and then I need Three, four, one, two, oops, slash, slash, one, two, three, four, slash, slash, one, two, three, four, slash, slash, one, two, three, four, slash, slash. I think that's enough. Um, that's the password. And this is a common um, technique for uh, directory traversals. Basically, the site is looking at the URL and it tries to remove any instances of dot, dot, slash. The problem is it only does that once. And so when you remove that dot, dot, slash, what's left is dot, dot, slash, and you remove a dot, dot, slash, and you get dot, you know, what I end up with is a bunch of dot, dot, slash, just how I want. Um, and uh, I, I, sh I can show in the blog post how I fuzzed this endpoint using a uh, LFI directory traversal um, word list to find this, um, so you didn't just have to guess it. Um, go check out my blog post if you want the full Snoopy solution. Um, but the focus today is going to be on, okay, so now we got this, um, you know, we can open it up. Here's the Etsy password. Got it. Um, how can I do that more easily? And how can I write a Python script to help me automate that? So um, yeah, you can jump over here. We can also look just in burp just to see it. Um, I keep foxy proxy set here with patterns so that anything um, going to a 10 dot or a snoopy or dot HDB domain goes through burp. And so you can see here, um, you know, here's the return of a PK, which is the magic bytes for zip. Um, so we have a zip archive coming back here, a raw zip archive. Uh, and you can even see Etsy password is in there. Cool. So how are we going to code this up? I'm going to open up VS Code, and I will trust myself. I will add uh, read file.py, and we'll get started. We always start off with our user bin m uh, python3. And uh, first thing we need to do is think about like how we interact with this. So we'll say, um, let's say, if len sys.argv is less than two, because I'm just gonna, I need to take in the file, it's gonna have, you know, the first thing is always the, the name of the binary that runs, and the second would be like the path to my file. So if I don't have that, I'm gonna say print, uh, we'll say like usage, this.rv zero, so that'll be the file name, space, uh, full path of file, something like that. And then we can sys.exit like that. We're definitely gonna need sys. Like that. Okay. Now we've got that. Oops, did not mean to do that. Let's go here. Um, and then we can say uh, f path equals sys.rv1. So basically, we guarantee there is a sys.rv1, and then we're just going to set it to f path because I don't want to type that over and over again. Um, the next thing we need to do now is actually get the file, and we'll need the requests module. Requests is the way you make HTTP requests. And so we can say um, response equals request.get. And uh, it's, it's, let's do this as an f string HTTP, uh, not f, it's HTTP, uh, snoopy.hackthebox slash download question mark file equals, and then we need, oops, slash, 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 one, two, three, four, slash, slash, one, two, three, four, slash, slash, one, two, three, four, slash, slash. Uh, and then we'll just put f path right here, and we should be good. Um, we can go ahead and give this a run. Let's see, uh, will I be able to? Let's say just for let's say x equals two, just to give myself a place to stop. If I hit F5, is this gonna work? Pick a Python file. Uh, that is a very silly error. And I don't want to check, I want to check len egg v2 like that. Let's try that again. F5. And oh I need I don't okay, so um I'll I'll take a quick break and show just I mean we could easily just run this in um one way to do this would just be Python. Um, my Python is Python 3, read file, uh, minus I, and we can run it like this, and we can, you know, we can now say, like, uh, the password, like this, ooh, 
and you definitely got to put the i back here. And now what the minus i does is it runs to the end of the file, and then it gives me a terminal. So I can look at response like this. Um, but I can also show you how to do this. If I want to do this, uh, create a launch.json file, it's a Python, and we're just going to come here and do args. And then I think we're supposed to account for, I don't know, if we're, I don't think we are. So we'll say, let's say Etsy password. That. Let's see if that works. I go back here to read file. And we're sweet, we're here. Um, so now I can go jump over to the debug console and say, what is response? It is a response 200. I can say response.txt. Um, and it's a bunch of, it is, it is the PK file. So um, that's pretty cool. I don't want, I'm not going to want it as text. Um, I'm actually going to do response.content. And that'll return it to me as a, a series of bytes. And so that's how I'll interact with it. So I got exactly what I'm looking for there. Um, now, I got a zip file. I want to I want to unzip file it, right? Um, so I'm going to use the zip file module. Like that. And I'm going to need, I'm also going to need, um, see if I can remember exactly how to import this. It's from IO import bytes IO. And I'll show you why we need this in just a second. Um, so we're going to come down here. We don't need x equals 2 anymore. We can stop this run. Um, we're going to say with zip, zip file dot zip file and as zip file. I'm going to have to come back and fill this in in a minute. Uh, I'm going to leave this blank for a minute. I a zip file like that. Um, now I can say like, uh, we'll say x equals 2 here again so we can do our same thing. Um, now what we want to be able to do is we need to pass zip file is actually going to read a file handle object. I don't have a file handle. I have the raw file here, right? In this response.content. And that's what bytes.io is going to let me do. So bytes.io on response.content is basically going to take this blob of data and treat it like it's give it, wrap it in a file handler so that zip, the zip file can read it as if it's coming from a file. Um, so it's creating kind of a virtual file for me that it can read out. Um, so now if we do that, We'll hit F5 again, and we'll run to here, and we can go back to our debug console, and we can start to look at it. So zip file is going to have a bunch of stuff. Um, the first thing we want to be able to do is name list like that. And you can see it's going to give us the list of files in here. Um, so what we can do is what we, we, are always, we are always going to give it just one file. We know that. So we can say uh, file path in zip is equal to zip file dot name list and we just always want the first item and so that'll give us that and now we can say with zip file dot open file path in zip as file now we can actually read this as a file so we can just say contents equals file dot read um, and so now if we come down here my put a breakpoint here we will restart this. Now when we get to the debug console, we can look at contents, and it is our Etsy password file. So we've managed to pull the contents out of there. So now it's just as simple as print uh, contents that I'm going to decode this because that's bytes. And so now we don't need to have a breakpoint in here anymore. We can uh, run this again, and we print out the Etsy, Etsy password file. Um, the one last thing we want to be able to do to the here is um, what if I want to read a binary file, right? What if I want to read something that's not easily printed to my terminal. I want to save it. Um, so I'm going to just add myself a, so we'll come down here and we'll say like uh, optional save as, and we'll say um, out file is equal to sys.rg2 uh, if len sys.rg is greater than two else none. I think that'll work. Um, so basically then, if it's long enough, giving that none thing. And now I can come down here and say, uh, if out file, say pass for a minute, and I can say else and do that. Now, if there's an elf out file, what are we going to do? We're going to with open don't need out file and write binary as f f dot write contents and maybe we'll print uh, results written to out file. Sweet. So now we can come down here, we'll go back to our terminal, 
And we will see so we can read out the password. Don't need the dash i anymore. Uh, and if we want to save it as password, now it says that, and we could vim password, and we've got it there. Um, if we wanted to, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but bin bash, do bash. Uh, can we read it? Let's see. MD, let's, can we run this? Uh, change mod, oops. Change mod plus x bash. I think that worked. Yeah, it did. I mean, it started a new bash, which was indistinguishable from my current one. But then when I ran exit, I didn't leave the terminal. I actually left that bash session. So I downloaded and ran bash and it worked. Um, not that we need bash, but I'm just showing I can run a binary. We can get a binary file. So um, that's the video on um, this one. I'll, you know, I, I think this is the kind of thing where if you can throw together a script like this and, you know, I really tried to explain everything. But really, you know, I can write this script and less than five minutes. And then when I go to enumerate, it just it makes up for itself over and over again. Um, the first time you go to write one of these scripts, it's not going to take you five minutes. It's going to take you 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You're going to have to do a lot of Googling. You're going to be in chat GPT. Um, but that's okay, because as you practice doing that, it's a skill you're going to develop, and that time is worth it. So um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will uh, talk to you next time. Bye.